I'd uh, like to again thank uh, Jan Between the Lines, Model D, uh, for the, just the incredible work they've done on this effort. And it's thanks to the Hope Fund, which is a fund of the Community Foundation and an extraordinarily committed and active group of advisors and volunteers, we've been able to grant over $1.7 million to really support the special needs in the LGBT community. And that... was about 17, I remember sitting at home and watching what is PBS in New York, Channel 13, and three black women, Pat Parker, Audre Lorde, and June Jordan, thank you very much, uh, were on the television talking about lesbians. And I was sitting in my living room, glued to the television set. And a voice from the kitchen said, Margie, what you watching? Public television? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at that point in time, nearly 40 years ago, well, 35, <laughs> having images of gays on television was rare, but having images of women of color who were LGBT, well, you know, who were in any way um, lesbian identified just didn't happen. And I was amazed. So I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and let us know what support would you like to see from us? Tony Johnson. Um, I would say support and education. Knowledge as far as HIV, make it cover. If you don't know, it will kill you. Marlon Collier. What would I like to see? Um, I think the support that I would like to see um, is a continuance in nurturing. Um, what I mean by that is, is that um, too often we have lots of youth within the LGBT community that simply are not nurtured. Um, they are told constantly that they will forever be misfits um, even further than that, um, that they will never succeed. Uh, turning 30 today helped me to realize that I've had a lot of nurturing coming up, but there are a lot of people that are not as fortunate as I was. So more nurturing, continue that. For me, um, visibility, um, being a trans woman, there are not a lot of um, positive examples of what it is to be a trans woman. Um, visibility, education, because society doesn't really understand what it is to be transgender, and I think that um, the media puts all these perceptions out there which confuses society even more. And inclusion, just to be able to be included, to be able to um, go to school and gain um, identification without having the major hurdles that most trans people have to do to get their names changed, um, birth certificates, um, insurance, um, having insurance cover certain medications and certain surgeries. KBB Blackthorn, um, and I, I think the creation of, of more safe spaces for young people is, um, I think, one of the most important things in terms of places where young people see mentors who who are like them and and doing the things that that 
that they want to see represented in the world, but also places where they can be themselves and where they get a chance to um, to define who they are themselves instead of having it defined for them. I'm Rosemary Linares, and I'm sorry I'm late, but there was this traffic jam on 14. <laughs> but I'm here now, and I just want to mention that I'm here with little Damien, who is my stepson, but he might as well be my biological son. He takes after me. And I'm viewing the world right now with the lens of um, board and governance capacity building because I got a new job. And so I think that youth need the opportunity to be able to serve and be recognized on nonprofit boards. Um, in 1998, Michigan passed a law so that 16-year-olds can be able to serve on boards and vote, and that's really awesome that the state has done that, and yet there are not a lot of youth on boards, and I think that that's a very powerful way for youth to be included and recognized, and I, I would advocate for that. Before I was... Um, thrust into this um, status that I am, um, I guess. So um, I was really um, at a crossroads with coming out and telling my story because I felt like as a trans person, that's not, I don't have to go out and tell people, oh, I'm Bree and I'm a trans person. So I kind of reverted back and that was something that I kept to myself. Um, it was something that I didn't talk about. Um, I stopped being an advocate in the community and got a job and was living the heterosexual lifestyle and um, without a problem. And so um, one of the trans women in the community was murdered. And I remember posting on Facebook how hurt I was and um, I didn't feel like that she got the attention, the coverage, the support that she needed to get. And someone on Facebook was like, well, Bree, why are you worried about it? It's just, um, you're not like those girls. And it really struck a chord to me because I was like, but I am. Um, we share something in common, and I think that was the thing that kind of thrust me back into the community because I wanted people to see that just because people um, get misguided um, doesn't mean that they're not people. So what I do now is I tell my story not for my own benefit, and sometimes it makes me uncomfortable, but to be able to say there is a trans person out in the community that's doing something and to inspire my trans sisters to um, have a hope and a dream. I am actually thankful for the people that teased me when I was younger. Um, because I was not always um, your typical kid. Um, I didn't go outside to play. I didn't like sports. Um, I wasn't into riding bikes. I wanted to stay in the house. I wanted to read. I wanted to draw. I wanted to do things like that. Um, and I was picked on about it in school. You know, people were like, he's weird, what's wrong with him? Um, but eventually, as time progressed, you get those people who actually nurture who you are, who accept you for who you are and just let you be you. So in that moment, my light began to shine, um, which brings me along my path, along my journey of life to where I am now to, um, when you are liked to other people, you attract more people to you. Um, and you attract, my famous saying for this year, people of like minds. Um, and being in that space with those like minds makes your light shine brighter. So if you get this collection of lights together and we all shine together and people begin to take notice, you bring more people into it. Being a person who has been working with you since I was a youth, and still am, um, I always heard this term when described to a lot of the youth that we work with from people either who worked in the community or dealt with it as throwaway youth. Um, when we deal with youth who are going from house to house or who are uh, doing commercial sex work to get by and things like that, a lot of times we just we look at them as a number or we look at them as a, 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 a upcoming number for, for HIV rates. Instead of looking at them as an overall person and realizing that they have issues too, just as we do, but actually taking them and using their voices and keeping them out of trouble but saying, hey, this is what lobbying is. Let's, let's take you to, to, to Capitol Hill and let you, you know, talk to the president or talk to your congressperson. 
Um, but we need to start taking these young people and using their voices for good instead of using them for numbers or to throw them aside. Opportunity uh, many moons ago to, to come out in the old affirmation, scared to death, and I'm still scared coming out again. But I'm coming out as an elder, and I had the opportunity to um, go to Washington D.C. out on the hill with uh, 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 young people, not you, Curtis. Uh, and it was an experience that I must tell you, and I didn't say this to them, but I was afraid, it was a, I, I was afraid of, um, what am I gonna say, how am I gonna fit in? And I think that um, a lot of things needs to happen. First of all, in our community of color, elders need to come out of the closet. <laughs> we need to be, they, they, they need to be, if I was 30, I might look, but if I were 30 again, I would be screaming, where are my elders in the community? Where are you? Where are you? But I realized that what I had for them was stability. What I had for them was to uh, the responsibility to be out of the closet at the grocery store, the gas station, the bank, everywhere in my marriage to stand up and say that I am legally married, what does that look like? How do they live? And, and to be able to hear them and be okay with where they are at, you know, where, where, however they dress, whatever they, I mean, some of the stuff is scary, but <laughs> out on the hill, those young people are coming out of those uh, 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 universities and they're not, they're, they're, they're going up on Capitol Hill dressed in the full truth of their life, hiding nothing. And so I was just encouraged, I was just uh, uh, excited about that and I know that we need to reconnect here in this city, in this town with our young people. You just be who you are. Wear your boys' clothes, whatever. But we need to embrace them and support them, and especially in our community of color. They need to see us. We need to be talking. We need to be at the table. We need to uh, 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 take all the responsibility off of the shoulders of Curtis, and the rest of us get out there and support Hank and, and, and everybody. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm John Trimble. Um, I, <laughs> um, I think it's, I think the, the word fear is too strong in the context of this conversation. 
Because when you, I'm going to try to connect two things at the same time. When you think of fear and race and sexuality and identity, all of those things are social construction. So if we take away those things and, and, and look at each other as just having what you experience as a black trans woman is equally as important as what I experienced as a black gay man. Conversely, what you experience as a 75 year old white gay man, right, who came out in 19, somebody help me if you're 77. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. I, 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 I mean, okay. Here's, here's the direct point. Yesterday, yesterday I had the, the great pleasure of presenting uh, about a conversation about Bayer Rustin. Bayer Rustin, of course, has been gone, has left us since the 87th, right? And he came out, he, was, he lived in this intersection of being Quaker, pacifist, black, and gay in the 1940s, in the 1930s. He was born in 1912. Let's be clear, to come out, in, be, to be Quaker, black, pacifist, and gay, and come out in like 1920, Somebody in 2013 who was just coming out living in the intersection of urbanness of black and gay, those stories are very relevant because my coming out story is not even less than yours. Send you home with Dr. Hill's final charge to us. She said, community is about finding home and building home and that we have much work to do. So let us be about the building of our homes and communities. Thank you.